Hello everybody, this is the second part of our series of lectures about the Doppler applications in ultrasound. And this part will discuss the Doppler waveform display. Doppler waveform displays, we have two types, either the analog or the digital. The digital is called the Doppler spectral waveform and the analog is called the Doppler analog waveform. So here are some details about this. The, in the analog Doppler waveform, we'll study the processing, how this function is done, how this uh, uh, application is done, and the processing and display, and how what are the criteria of this waveform. Uh, in the second part, or, or the digital display, we have the digital spectral Doppler waveform, and usually this is simply called the spectral waveform, or the Doppler spectrum. And in here, <clears throat> we have this, it uh, could be actually performed either with the pulse wave or the continuous wave transducer. In the pulse wave applications that we have, the, we will study the processing and the display, how this waveform is optimized and uh, that what are the display in different hemodynamics in the arterial and venous waveform. And again, we'll discuss the continuous uh, CW waveform. So here is the Doppler analog uh, waveform. As you see here, it's one line, only one line going up and down. So this analog, uh, analog technology, guys, for the Doppler waveform has been developed long time before the era of digital uh, technology we are living in. So it is not widely utilized nowadays. Uh, there are other applications that can be replacing it, mainly the, the digital one. Um, it, it used to display the waveform in the one line format. W what is this one line? It's displaying only one velocity. What is this one velocity? It's the mean velocity or the average velocity. It does not display the whole spectrum or the whole range of velocities at this moment it is uh, displaying. It displays only the average of this velocity. That's why the display comes in one line. So as for the processing and display of this, the, the analog the Doppler waveform, uh, it was used to be by a, a zero crossing, or which is the commonest technology at that time, the commonest technique to, to get this the, the waveform. And as you see here in this waveform, you have, you see there is a, a red line going up and down. This is the, the mean velocity, and it's displayed as one line here, or the average velocity. And as it goes up and down, it crosses the zero line. The zero line is the black line here. So as it crosses this zero line, it clicks, and that's why it gives what, what we call the zero crossing technique, or that's why it's called the zero crossing technique. Again, it displays the mean Doppler shift as one line or one velocity. So now we'll discuss the digital technique or the digital technology to display the velocities in the waveform. And these blood velocities are displayed in the digital format. It could be operated either by the pulse wave transducers or continuous wave transducers. So first we'll discuss or study the pulse wave uh, spectral Doppler waveform. Uh, and here we'll have three points to mention. What is the processing and display? What is the technique here? Second is optimization. How can I adjust the settings uh, to get a good waveform? And the third point, uh, what is the waveform features when we have different hemodynamics and how we can interpret this waveform in these hemodynamics conditions? First is processing and display. So if we follow the, this uh, block diagram, and we, we see that by the demodulator, it, we could get the Doppler shift extracted. And this Doppler shift is gonna be analyzed by the first quadrature to obtain the direction. Is it positive or negative? Means that is it towards or away? And this will be sent to the digital display, which is similar to the scan converter in the B mode uh, study. Uh, the, then from this digital display, uh, we will get to, the, to, to use the fast Fourier transform. So fast Fourier transform is our topic now. This is where we are. We are in this area here. So this is the fast Fourier transform, and this is the, the technique or the technology that is used to bring me the Doppler spectral waveform. 
So this is the fast Fourier transform FFT. This is the commonest technology used nowadays for the Doppler spectral waveform. Uh, this technology process and displays the full spectrum or the full range of velocity, and that's why we call it spectral display. It's not displaying the average velocity, it displays all the range of velocities at any moment of time, at any fraction of a second. I can know by this display what is the range of velocities that are being uh, detected at this moment of time. So that's why we call it the full range of velocities or the spectrum of velocity. Uh, what we measure here, we measure the highest velocity being detected. So we are not measuring the average of these velocities, we are measuring the highest of this range. <clears throat> so now we know that the, the fast Fourier transform digital processing is the one utilized by the Doppler system to display the spectrum waveform. The cornerstone in the fast Fourier processing is the Doppler equation. This is the one that is practically describing the variables behind the production of the Doppler shift in the medium or in the blood flow. Uh, by substituting the values of the Doppler shift, which is obtained by the demodulator, the FO, which is the, the, the frequency or the operating frequency, and this is known from the pulsar or the transmitter, the cosine angle theta, and this is our job as sonographers to provide this angle using the cursor. And then the C, which is the, uh, already provided by the software, this is the 1.54 millimeter per microsecond. So if you substitute all these values in the Doppler equation, the uh, true velocity will be easily obtained and displayed. So when we have the pulse wave activated or updated, what happened to the screen? The screen usually splits in two parts. One part containing the anatomy image, and is this anatomy image, it displays or uh, shows one line, is the, the long line, which is called the Doppler scan line. This is coming from the transducer, and it also in, in this, along this line, we have the, the sample volume or the gate, which is this simple uh, equal sign. And then uh, we have what we call the angle correction arm or sometimes called the cursor. So these three uh, plotted lines, they will be plotted over the anatomy screen. And this is how you can move the anatomy to fit with these uh, lines. So you can move the angle correction, you can move the, the, the uh, sample volume or the gate so to fit the anatomy. The second part of the display will get what we call the spectral waveform. So here, as we mentioned earlier, that we have the image split in two parts. This is called the duplex image. image duplex imaging is what? When we have anatomy image together or the B-mode image together with the Doppler line and the gate and the, uh, or the sample volume and the cursor line, this together is one part, and the second part of the screen will show you the Doppler spectrum waveform. This is called the duplex image. Can I have a duplex image with the continuous wave? No. Why? If the dedicated continuous wave, I can never have an image. That's why I cannot get anatomy with the continuous wave, and this is the, with the dedicated continuous wave. That's why continuous wave transducer can never bring me a duplex, only bring the spectral waveform. Somebody will ask, what is the triplex then? What if I'm applying color to the image? And this is a common practice. We have scanning, we put the color, and then we put the spectral waveform. So what happens here? I call it what? This is academically, or, or the, uh, uh, the uh, teaching, this is called the triplex. So it's not duplex, triplex. Or sometimes people call it the color duplex, OK? So what is the duplex? when you have the B-mode image with the Doppler spectrum waveform. What is the triplex of me having B-mode with color and the spectral waveform? So let's start studying the Doppler spectrum waveform. And as we know, as any graph, we have the X and the Y axis. The X axis here is the horizontal line and it represents the time, uh, for example, seconds or milliseconds. And the other axis, the y-axis, and this represents the velocities and its direction. 
for example, a high velocity will be displayed close to this end, and the lower velocity will be close to the beginning here. So this is the velocity. And also it represents the direction of the flow. If I'm having flow toward the transducer, it will be giving a positive shift, which will be represented above here, above the baseline. But if we have a Doppler shift that is negative, meaning that the flow is away from the transducer, it will be displayed below the baseline here. And then we come to the z-axis. Z-axis, everybody knows that uh, it's the third dimension. But here we have uh, uh, two dimension. Why is the z-axis? Z-axis here represents the brightness, how the waveform is bright, as if it's coming from the plane of the display towards your eye. So it's just a virtual direction. It's a virtual, it's not a real direction, but it's a virtual direction. Why? Because it represents how bright is the waveform. Is it toward the, your eye? Is it too bright or lower bright or dark bright? Okay. Let's study the x-axis. And as we know, that is representing the time. It starts from here all the way to this direction. So this is the horizontal line or horizontal axis. It shows that time and also it's, it represents the spectral waveform based on the sweep speed. What is the sweep speed? If you have a, a point here and it goes in this direction in a slow way, this is a slow sweep speed. If it goes from here fast, I'm having a fast sweep speed. Usually the, the, the average one is 50 millimeter per second. Sweep speed, 50 millimeters per second. So each second, I'm having 50 millimeters display. So let's have an idea about what is the low sweep speed and the high sweep speed. Lower sweep speed, it, the dot that I told you, it, it might move slower. So as it goes slower, it has more chance to accommodate more of the waves. So it gives me an idea uh, if I want to compare the waves, the rhythm of the, of the heart or the, if there is arrhythmia or whatever, I can detect it easier with the slower sweep speed. But if I'm having a higher sweep speed like this, 100 millimeter per second, it goes fast. What happened? It, it collects less number of cycles. But what is the benefit here? The benefit, I can't get the detail of each individual cycle here. For example, this is the systole and the diastole. I can see the details of the diastole if there's any inversions or any uh, uh, high, high, high resistance or lower resistance. I can see it more easier with the uh, high sweep speed. So what is the average? The average usually is 50 millimeter per second. And this is most of the machines are set to this, but you can adjust it uh, as we know. So now we'll come to the y-axis and this is the vertical axis. And it represents the velocity scale, meaning that what are the setting of the scale that is available for the velocity to be displayed. Uh, also, it displays the direction of the flow. Direction is it above the baseline or below the baseline. For example, here, if you look at this, uh, we know that this is the y-axis and we know that it's acting at the baseline or the zero limit for the, for the scale. For example, if I'm having here, <coughs> excuse me, if I'm having here a lower velocity to be displayed in all, always in this area, and if I'm having here high velocity to be displayed here. And if I'm having a reversal flow, it will be here. So this is the, the y-axis. Uh, now let's have an example. If you have an, a transducer that is sending, for example, a five megahertz. Five megahertz means five million hertz. If the reflections are higher than this, so it's higher than five million, what happens? I will get a positive shift. Where it will be displayed? It will be displayed above the baseline because it's a positive shift. If I'm having the reflections are less than the five million, so what happens? I'm getting here a negative Doppler shift, and the negative Doppler shift will be displayed below the baseline. For example, these are reversal flow because they are away from the transducer, and they are representing Doppler shift that are lower than the transmitted or the operating frequency. Also, the y-axis, the y-axis here, it can help me if, if just for example, I want to know. What is at this moment of time, what is the velocity of the blood? If I got, for example, this is the curved arrow here. So if I'm having here a point, if I draw from this point a vertical line here, it cuts through the 
spectral waveform. And it shows here from this point to this point, this is the range of velocities at this particular point of time. So this is the range of velocity here. If I imagine that I'm just giving some wild numbers. If this is between 10 and let's say 50 uh, centimeter per second. So this is the range of velocities at this moment of time. So this is the, uh, the and this is why we call it the spectrum waveform because it shows me a spectrum of velocity. Now, what if I want to measure the peak systolic? I measure this point. I don't measure the whole range from this point to this point here. I measure only this. So the peak systolic, that's why I call it peak systolic because at this peak, this is the maximum velocity depicted at the sample volume or at the, the gate. Now we come to the z-axis, and actually this is a virtual z-axis. It's representing the brightness of the waveform. Like for example, this picture here, we have uh, low amplitude waves. Low amplitude means that the amplitude of the Doppler shift is low. Uh, here, remember that we are not talking about the frequency shift. The frequency shift is the Doppler shift value. But if I'm talking about the amplitude, it's different from the frequency shift. We need to remember this. So if I'm having a lower amplitude Doppler shift, what happens? I get the waveform that way. So it's not, it's not bright. It's a little bit darker, darker gray shape. If I'm having a, a high amplitude, okay, what happens? I will get a more brighter waveform. So what are the factors that are affecting this? Many factors, including the attenuation and how, how much is the waveform and how much is the frequency of the transducer and many factors, but one of the factors is the amount of red blood cells uh, in the blood. So if I'm having a higher amount of red blood cells or higher concentration, uh, a clinical condition called polycythemia, P-O-L-Y-C-Y-T-H-E-M-I-A, polycythemia is another, it's a condition that people might have a higher concentration of red blood cells and this might represent as brighter uh, uh, shades, uh, brighter uh, waveform. If another condition, the opposite, if I'm having somebody who's having lower amount of red blood cells, like anemia, we all know that anemia is a condition that we have the red blood cells are lower in amount. So what happened? They might represent the shade, the Doppler shades are in the uh, uh, lower shades of gray. 